John, you got any plans for Cyber Monday? Anything that you are planning on trying to pick up? Do you do the Black Friday thing, uh, Cyber Monday thing? Oh, yeah. I've done Black Friday every year for the past probably 15 years. So I've, I've got a few things I've been watching for Cyber Monday here in my shopping cart on Amazon. So I figured, you know, I'm going to go out shopping that day, maybe put some pants on if I remember to when I go to the store. <laughs> kind of go from there, see how it goes. Well, you're going to use um, Amazon Smile, of course, I hope. Oh, absolutely. I have that set up. I changed all my favorites to the, the smile.amazon. So any anyone on any computer that goes through it, it's going to automatically do the credit for the, uh, the Mora on it. Uh, okay. Um, so our listeners may not understand what we're talking about here. Hopefully you do. But if you don't, um, there's a program called Amazon Smile. And Amazon allows nonprofit organizations, they have to be true 501c3 nonprofit organizations, to sign up to receive a small percentage of every sale that you use. But you have to use what's called smile.amazon.com. So if you go to smile.amazon.com, you can look up a whole list of nonprofits. Uh, It doesn't cost you anything. And... I think anybody that uses Amazon should do this For sure. all the time. We would love it if you support the Museum of Off-Road Adventure, and that's how you find us, Museum of Off-Road Adventure. If you just yes. type that in, you'll find it on smile.amazon.com. But even if you don't want to support us... Um, There's it hundreds of other very good registered Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Cancer Societies, American Heart Association, um, you know, Boy Humane Scouts Society. of America, Humane Society, all yeah. those. So it doesn't cost you anything. And every purchase you make on Amazon, they, they give like, I think, I don't know what, 0.2% or 0.5%. It's so like it, half a percent, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. I think it's half a percent. Trying to, I just pulled it up here real quick, trying to see what I've got here. Well... I got nothing so far. Oh, that's all right. So, <laughs> Joe, all right. What I don't do the Black Friday thing, John. Mm. I is it even worth it? I mean, it seems so. Years past, there, there are some good deals to be had, but years past, it, there were way better deals. I mean, I'm the type I I plan this out. There's usually a small group of us. We plan this out ahead of time, like several days to a week ahead of time. We get all the ads online before it's all mailed out. Hunt a list, and we actually like map out what we're doing. It, it was a pretty big deal when we started doing this. And now it's tradition more than anything, or yeah. What? And unfortunately, more than anything anymore, there's there's just nothing there. You know, we used to be the ones that went out in tents. You know, we'd get there Thursday night after dinner. I'd go out, you know, set a little tent up and run a Target or something. And we got some smoking deals back then. Sounds but like a terrible time. <laughs> it was camping on asphalt. <laughs> I mean, you're usually not sleeping. It's just kind of there if you want to warm up or something. Mm. But we, you know, that's what we used to do. And anymore in this, I, I personally don't agree with it. All these stores that are open on Thanksgiving or start these deals on Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm not okay with that. So, I mean, I don't like that. The, the businesses, I think, have tried to capitalize on the idea too much. And most of the quote-unquote deals you're seeing out there, if you know how to shop, you can get most of those deals throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I've got a knack for finding things as cheap as possible. Okay. So I'm seeing some of these deals, and it's like I paid twenty dollars less than what their sale price is, you know, three months ago. You're saying you're not okay with them being open on Thanksgiving, or you're not no. okay with them doing the. Black Friday sales on Thanksgiving. That I uh, open Thanksgiving, but oh. I, you know my my whole thing is not the the poetic Thanksgiving is a day to be thankful thing. Is you know it's a family day. Whether or not your family celebrates it, the store shouldn't be open. I I don't think they should be. That's you know the whole idea of Black Friday is Black Friday. Okay, it's I, been so polluted over the years. It's. Yeah, it's okay. not what it used to be. I may disagree with you here a bit because um, Thanksgiving is probably the least religious holiday there is. Oh yeah, without um, a doubt. <laughs> but it's uh, you know I'm a history buff, as you mm-hmm. know, and the re- as any intelligent human that's done reading in the last 
30 or 40 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the true history of Thanksgiving is far more skewed and, oh, and, yeah. and bloody. And, Most and just, holidays are that Yeah, <laughs> so... Um, but I love the. It is one of my favorite holidays. I love mm-hmm. uh, you know. You just food. like the food. You I, know that's it. it is. I do. That's the food. The food. The gathering of family. All of that. Yeah. Um, and the arguments. Uh, you know the you know the political arguments, the sports arguments. Well, whatever. you know what they say. If you want to make your Christmas shopping easier, just start talking about politics and everything on Thanksgiving, and then you won't have to buy Ooh, anything like for it. Christmas. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, speaking of Cyber Monday. And arguing a little bit, um, I think there's a topic maybe we need to hit today a little bit. I'm I'm for it. You know the one I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, that new radio that came out for the uh, the car speakers, like a wireless radio unit. What what what? <laughs> <laughs> We're not on the same page here. We are not. No, no I'm okay. thinking of the Cybertruck, which is oh, uh, yeah. Tesla has just announced, and uh, it is a very polarized. And yeah, you know, you and I, we've only talked very briefly as to what our thoughts are on it, and I'm wondering if you and I have the same thoughts on the Cybertruck. I love it. So let's talk about the Cybertruck and a few other things today. Uh, let's do that. Okie dokie. <laughs> It's time to hit the trail, lock in those hubs, and throw it into low range. Because you are listening to Wheel It with Keith and Johnny Orange. Broadcasting from the Thin Line Off-Road Studio, they're here to talk about 4x4s, trucks, and everything to do with enjoying the great outdoors. Buckle up, here's your hosts, Keith and Johnny Orange. So... The Cybertruck came out this week, yes. which is a big part of 4x4 News. Yes. I want to talk about that. Um, do you want to go right into the Cybertruck, or do you want to talk about some of the other little 4x4 news that, that's out there? Yeah, we can go a little bit, split the difference, make the people wait. Make people wait for a second for the Cybertruck? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, what do you got in 4x4 News, John? Um. Besides the Cybertruck. <laughs> Uh, minor Project XJ stuff. Not, sure. Not a whole lot. What, what, you know, give us a brief... Uh... Well, I fixed the lower shock mounts. As uh, those of you who follow on 4x4 Talk saw, made some custom pins and took care of that problem. And then last night, I got the tube cut for the rocker panel on the driver's side. So I just got to weld the cap on and then start doing the floors. Well, the driver's side floor. Okay, cool. So, progress. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, just more rearranging in the garage. Put uh, boards up in the rafters, help hold some of the heat down. Okay. That made a huge difference with the lighting out there, too. Good I deal. I realized how much light was being wasted going up. It's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. So much brighter, it's quieter, there's nothing echoes now. Okay. It's actually really, really nice. Um... Well, you know, I'm still looking forward to seeing Project XJ out there uh, on the trails soon. Um, I don't have many personal updates in 4x4 News. Of course, like we said, uh, the Cybertruck is kind of some big 4x4 News. Speaking of 4x4 talk, though, um, we have had quite a bit more traffic there lately in the Hmm. last uh, week or two, um, getting more requests to join the group. Um, Cool. I apparently didn't uh, write them all down. I have one here. The most recent, a uh, Mr. Clay Ox here. I, I, I might be axing that name, but um, uh, A U X I E R. Uh, he lives in Te- Denton, Texas. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, thank Hello, you sir. for joining thank 4 by 4 Talk. Uh, we have had some others. Sweet. Um, museum news. Ooh. Uh, we yeah, I saw the Facebook post. You saw the Bantam trailer? Yeah, that thing looks cool, man. Yeah, that, uh, that thing is, is super cool. Uh, Mr. Bill Norris that owns the 47 CJ2A that we have. Very cool. Uh, got a hold of us. He had restored this Bantam trailer, which uh, we don't know how many were made or how many are left. It's a fairly rare piece. Um, I so, it's yeah. circa around 47. He doesn't have an exact year on it. Mm-hmm. But did a beautiful uh, nut and bolt restoration of this thing. Nice. And, uh, so just did the nuts and bolts on it, nothing else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great complimentary piece to yeah. the 47 uh, awesome. CJ2A. That's awesome. I'll have to get down there and take a look at it for sure one of these days. Um, I was listening to some old episodes, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a little bit of a 4x4 news thing, John. I think you're going to like this. 
Um, I was listening to some old episodes the other day, uh, just kind of reminiscing and seeing how different we sounded from the very beginning to today. Mm-hmm. Um, have you done that at all? Mm, not gonna lie, no. <laughs> oh no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I have everything downloaded on my phone through the Podbean app. I just okay. I haven't done it yet. So I was listening to uh, not many, just a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of like just jumping around a little bit, and um, I discovered something that I think you're going to really enjoy okay. in, in one of our er- early episodes. Mm-hmm. And but I I think I want to make this a challenge to okay. our listeners. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, one of our Patreon, and and I, this is a side note here, one of our Patreon uh, supporters uh, just earned his, Mr. Patrick Rowe, we've mentioned him before, mm-hmm. just earned his, because he's a $10 level supporter, just earned his um, T-shirt and decal package. Uh, so I just today mailed out um, a T-shirt to him, a Thin Line Off-Road T-shirt, and uh, some decals Very cool. and things like that. Whoever finds this, if they find this by the time we uh, upload, let's say, episode 35, Mm -hmm. we'll give them a couple episodes, a couple weeks here. Um, Whoever figures this out, if they do, if anyone does, and it's going to be the first person that figures it out, I'll mail them a Thin Line Off-Road t-shirt. Okay. Andrew, the producer, has supposedly never spoken on this podcast. He, I, I know otherwise, but yeah. You you know otherwise? Yeah. I didn't know this. Oh. <laughs> I caught him speaking in one of our episodes. Yeah. <laughs> you know which one it is? Not off the top of my head, but I remember okay. him speaking. Well, he actually says a full sentence. <laughs> you hear him in the background. Mm-hmm. It takes you a couple like going forward, back and forth listens mm-hmm. to figure out what he says. Yeah. I thought there were a couple like that. I don't think there is, but if they find one, I'll double check and I'll yeah. see. If somebody can tell me the sentence that Andrew the producer said <laughs> on 4 by 4 Talk, go on 4 by 4 Talk, say, Andrew the producer said this in episode blah, 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 we'll mail you a Thin Line Off-Road t-shirt. And it'll, it'll be the first person. First person. Okay. First person. Yeah. I like that. Not you. No, you I know kn- that. <laughs> okay. I'm all automatically right. disqualified. I know so, all of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was just listening to this old episode, and all of a sudden I hear Andrew in the background, and I'm like... What? <laughs> I'm like, we actually got him. I thought. I remember we hooked the mic up for him one day. I thought he talked no, with that too. No, he has not talked with the mic. Know. He had the I mic. He was going to talk did. with the mic. He didn't talk with the mic, but he uh, has been on the Wheel and Podcast. Or he, just he does exist. Out. He does <laughs> exist. So. Well, you and I know that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, anyways, and he's over there. Yeah, he's got his hand on his head. Like, oh my god, I missed it. I didn't edit myself out of an episode. So, uh, anyways. Uh, so that's going to be a fun one. Uh, anything else in 4x4 news that you have? Hmm. I have no updates on Project Excursion. I have, I have a no- comment on the excursion, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I, I don't think I have anything else as far as news. Well, no. you, okay, give me your comment on the excursion. Well, do we have any other news here? Any other news? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think... Uh, we already mentioned uh, that Mr. Chet. Oh, you know what? Uh, the, this is not. I'm just gonna put out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not really condolences, but um, this episode, Mr. Chad from Quick Draw Brand was supposed to come on to give us uh, a recap of his experiences at SEMA. Um, he's kind of been our boots in the uh, field reporter for some big events, which has been really appreciated. Mm. Um, he had to cancel on us the last minute because his kids brought a bug home from school. He said he's pr- completely lost his voice. So, um, you know, we appreciate to respond with that Microsoft thing though. Yeah. Well, we could have him yeah, type or whatever. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I don't know if he types that fast, but, uh, yeah. Chad, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. And, Absolutely. uh, we're going to try to hopefully get you in the next episode or two. Uh, to tell us about what happened at SEMA, because I know you got some great stories from that. Um, but no, beyond that, um, uh, my little shout out to Chad there. What do you got, John? Well, what was that uh, famed towing capacity you keep preaching about with your ultra rare several year make excursion? Well, the excursion, um, the highest towing capacity that they ever had was 11,000 pounds, and that was only in the 03 7 3 diesel, which. It's a lot, mm-hmm. but at the same point, like the new F-150 is like 14,000 pounds or something. Yeah. So, you know, 
you know what else? By, by modern standards, it's kind of lame. Mm-hmm. But w- well, what? It's else? a little modern, little new. That Tesla truck. Yeah. When equipped with the tri motor all wheel drive, fourteen thousand pound plus towing capacity. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> I read that, and you know that is one of the reasons why uh, I I don't know, man. I'm kind of thinking I need to buy one. I'm of these. not gonna lie, I like it. I like it a lot. Not just because it looks like a Halo truck. It's just cool. Have you I seen like the Halo the truck? I have. There, I've seen a couple different variations of it. The one in Peterson's uh, museum out in, in Vegas. No, or, no, uh, not that not one. Vegas, no. uh, Los Angeles. I haven't seen that one. Uh, no, you showed me pictures of it, I think. Yeah, maybe. it was really cool. Yeah. No, I, there's a couple guys I've, I've seen on Facebook that do builds of them based oh, off of Chevy okay. trucks, and I want one so bad. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cool. But hey, Okay, okay. So we're talking about the looks first. The, the okay. Tesla truck here. Yes. Um, my... I, I love it too, and here here's my reasoning behind it. Um, when I was a kid growing up in the '80s, we had movies like Blade Runner, Tron, Tron. We had Back to the Future, Star we Trek. had Demolition Man, <laughs> Star Trek. Futuristic vehicles quite often were these angular, triangular, um, wedge shaped vehicles, very super futuristic. Yeah, we now live in 2019, which is you know my young self. I'm still a kid at heart. Is the future, mm-hmm. and our vehicles are lame looking. Yes, uh, I think the closest and coolest we have to this is probably the DeLorean. And that was again, from the 80s. Yeah, that was from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, it was like 1982. All you the know? music was better than the cars. Well, so that's my <laughs> point here. Is like. Yeah. So, you know, everybody wanted the future to look like this, yeah. and sci-fi people wanted the future to look like this, and then Elon Musk gives us a future mm-hmm. that looks like this, and, and so many people are like, oh, it's ugly, it's stupid, it's blah, nah. blah, blah. No, nah, I like it. I, They're now, wrong. <laughs> I, I only see, well, right now, two flaws in the design. Mm-hmm. It, from, And I'm only talking from a, um aesthetics. Or, okay. And use, oh, not actually from aesthetics. From a usability standpoint, okay. From the exterior design, because I've only seen the 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 video of the guy getting in and out and going for a ride, mm-hmm. so I haven't seen too much about the interior yet. One, it doesn't have rear view mirrors on the outside. Nope, side and view mirrors. There's, I'll, I've got some details on okay, that. Okay, give me give me those. That, well, give me those. <laughs> what? Why does it not have side view mirrors? So this is from an individual I know who used to manufacture or work at a company that made the side view mirrors for the current Tesla vehicles. They were loaded with cameras and sensors placed on the outside of the vehicle. This has those integrated. So this is the first model, as I understand it, that has those built into it. So it's there, and it displays on that display screen that's in the middle of it. You see the sides of the vehicle on the center display? You see the what vehicles are next to it. I'm trying to pull a picture up of it, but I can't get it huh. to work fast enough. I don't know if I'd like that or not. I, I mean, I'd probably get used to it, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm used to, you know, I'm a former truck driver here. Uh, yeah. I'm used to looking at the side view mirrors far more than I am at the middle one. I mean, oh, most yeah. vehicles I get in, I could rip off the rear view mirror in the middle, mm-hmm. and I could do all of my driving by the side view mirrors. I'm, I'm kind of the same way with it. I, the, the middle one in the rear just, it annoys me more than anything because of the reflections, uh-huh. especially on the newer vehicles. Like tonight I had to borrow my dad's Jeep. It's got that stupid auto darkening thing. Okay. Well, my my eyes are light sensitive, so vehicles that are about twice as far back as that sensor reads just blind me. Uh, it's completely useless for me. Okay, I, I, yeah, I could see that. Um, you know, and okay, so in all fairness to the to the online uh, trolls and whatnot, um, I stole the rearview mirror thing. Like a lot of people have been like, "Oh, where's rearview mirrors?" Blah blah. blah. Yeah. And I've even seen memes. There's been the you know the. <laughs> You know, I forgot the rearview mirrors. The what? You know, and um, but there's something that I've come up with by looking at this truck that I have not seen anybody, not a single person, mention. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe somebody has, but I've read a lot of different reviews on this and a lot of different comments on Facebook and Twitter and things like that about the Tesla truck. Um, he actually did have one small failure, unless you have another answer for it, John. Um, in the design of the bed. The design of the bed? The design of the bed. He's hmm. bragging about the bed carrying capacity and the cargo space and uh, what eight or nine foot that you can put in the back of it. Yep. Six and a half uh, foot length, 100 cubic foot storage is what's Six in the Six and a half, sheet. okay. Yeah. Uh, try loading something over the side. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That I could see being a problem. Um, I, that is a big problem to me. Um, one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of lifted pickup trucks, I, I like the look of them, but big lifted pickup trucks is because I actually use pickup trucks and SUVs oh, every yeah. day for work. Yeah. And, you know, all too often I have tried to load something, even my old F-250, which mm-hmm. did not have a lift, but it had the factory snowplow package. So it was like, I don't know, three inches higher than a regular F-250. Mm-hmm. It was a bear to load anything from the side. I believe it. Into the tr- into the bed of the truck. Yeah. So, you know, looking at this Tesla truck, um, it's not going to be feasible. It's not going to be possible to walk up with some shovels or, uh, yeah, or, or grab a toolbox. Um, the Honda Passport. One of my coworkers, one of my um, foremen that, uh, one of my co-foremen, because I'm a foreman at that uh, demolition company, mm-hmm. um drives one of those Honda Passports. And I, I actually made, I told him, I said, we've made fun of those things a couple times on our <laughs> podcast already. Yeah. But uh, he carries, uh, in all reality, he carries a, an, a gang box with him, shovels, a wheelbarrow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had a full trunk under the bed of it, too, on the Honda Passport. I didn't either. Yeah, so that he actually has a lot of cargo space in that yeah. thing. But I watched him one day try to grab something out of the gang box that he had up against... I guess what would be the back of the cab, because the bed's not separate on the passport. It's like an mm-hmm. avalanche. And he was trying to grab something out of the gang box, and he tried to reach over, and he couldn't do it because of the angles of the back of the bed. Hmm. So he had to actually get up in there, yeah. in the bed, get up in the gang box. So I think we're talking about a different vehicle. The Honda Passport? Ridgeline, sorry. Ridgeline, okay. Ridgeline the pickup. So trying to pull these pictures up. Yes. Okay, so correction here. <laughs> um, I was there talking, we go. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, the Honda Ridgeline pickup truck. Yes. Yeah, so you see how the back of it's angular like that? Yeah. Um, that, that causes the same issue, and the Tesla's even more angled off in the back. Very much so. So yeah. um, that's the only... Now, and, and of course now... It's, since it's not a conventional bed design, anybody that wants to put, say, a slide-in camper in it is going to have to get one. It's got a tent option. Well, I see that it's got an <laughs> option, but like if a guy wants already owns yeah. a slide-in camper or something, it's not going to fit, yeah. most likely, unless they start cutting the body no, or that, something. That's, I wonder if they're going to maybe have to hinge sides on a, a final production version of it. Yeah, I just don't know. I, um, I will say this one thing. I absolutely love the ramps built into the gate. I didn't see that. Let me see that. Uh, well, just wait for the pictures to change here. It's kind of on what, auto. What? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, um, are those toolboxes that come out of the gate or the back or something? I'm not sure. Okay. I see I think that. it's like a sliding drawer storage kind of deal. I think it's one more, I think. Gotcha. Very futuristic design. Oh, yeah. Now, for those who are wondering what we're doing, we're looking at the, on the website, it's got a lot of different pictures, different angles, the interior... Some of the different options and stuff. Oh, I yeah, okay. I see what you're talking yeah. about, the ramp. That is pretty cool. That if you is, watch the, the launch video, it shows it when they pull the, the quad up into it. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a teles- what it what it is is a telescoping tailgate. Yeah. Um, and it comes out in three parts, it looks like, and until it hits the ground. Uh, my only concern about that is, uh, you know, if you start to damage the tailgate with um, use, is yeah. it, are those going to malfunction? But... I don't know. It he seems said, to be all pretty made of heavy duty stainless. Yeah, so that's. Huh. I'd, I'd be interested to see more. Yeah, my. Wait a minute. That's back up that last picture. Uh, Did that have a gas door? Charge port. Oh, is that that's where the charge port is? Yeah. Behind the wheel. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um. Oops. All right, man. Well, okay. Uh. Before we go to break, you got anything else about the aesthetics of it that you want to talk about? I just like it, but let's 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 maybe take a moment we can look at some of these pictures and then uh, check the website out somewhere. Come back with some more on it. I like that idea. Sounds good. See you in a bit. <laughs> Tis the season for the annual History of Christmas Tree Walk in Algonac, Michigan. There are 16 days to choose from this year. Visit December 6th through 9th, 13th through 16th, 20th through 23rd, or 27th through 30th to see over 200 trees displayed inside a gorgeous 9,500 square foot log home. For more details, go to thechristmaswalk.com or call 810-794-2300. For fun food to put you in a festive mood, visit Foxfire Fixin's restaurant in marine city before or after the walk 
All right, John. So we're back, and um, you know we've been watching these videos. Uh, now, are these real videos or are these CGI animations? I'm having this a- one's real, as far as I'm aware. Okay, so that's the that's the Tesla truck in action. Appears to be most of a commercial. And if you watch the the preview when he announced it, they had the uh, the tug of war with the F one fifty, and then it racing a Porsche. Yeah, no, I I did read that there's a little bit of controversy about the tug of war with the F one fifty, but I mm-hmm. don't know what the like Ford's basically demanding a rematch on that. <laughs> and um I, I I didn't read through all of it, but it was something about the tire width, I think, or the tire size. Cause I know that the wider the tire, the more traction you get, of yeah. course. Um, and the Tesla truck does have significantly wider tires than a stock F one fifty, but uh, beyond that, I'm I'm not really sure. But you know, aesthetically, it's very futuristic, and oh, it's yeah. really like even when I saw it right out of the box, I I saw it and I said, you know, I I don't love love the design, but I really like it. I do. I, I like I like the futuristic yeah. design of it. Um, and you know, it's funny because people made fun of it to mm. no end. Oh yeah. But They'll he's already he's already taken like 145 minutes. 187,000 pre-orders, I think it was, in the first 93 minutes it was available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and it's all free advertising by oh, yeah. people on social media. Point in case, us right here today. Yeah, Elon Musk <laughs> is a genius, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, and I, I may, uh, we may hopefully be able to get to test drive one of these in the future. I would love to do that. You know, that would be something pretty interesting. Yeah. What's what it was saying. A lot of them. I mean, the, again, I'm, I have the spec sheet pulled up right now for the tri motor, 16 inches of ground clearance. That's insane. Yeah, that is really <laughs> good. That is really good. Now when they're calling it a tri motor, um, is that going to be individual wheels that operate? I'm not honestly certain how that works. Yeah, or is that I'm three motors? I'm not that knowledgeable the- on how the motor, the multiple motor things work with the electric vehicles. Yeah, me neither. Um, but even the the single motor, pull that one back up. I mean, that one's got the same clearance. All the changes is the, the you know the zero to sixty, the drivetrain. That one obviously is just a rear wheel drive, and then two hundred and fifty mile range on that one. So I would imagine it's going to be like one motor per wheel plus one for the rear you know, pair or rear axle. Gotcha. That would be my, my thought anyways. Well, so one of the things that, uh, you know, I noticed right, right away, um, you know, I'm, I'm a member, I use Facebook more than I use Twitter or Instagram Mm -hmm. and I'm probably in conservatively 60 or 70 Facebook groups. Mm Mm-hmm. And I almost all of them are automotive based because yeah. you know that's that's just what I'm into. You know, I've got a few that are non automotive based, mm-hmm. but um, I was taking a look at the uh, you know the different groups, and I was seeing the reception there, and there was a lot of people making funny memes and a lot of people oh, yeah. um, ripping. It. I'll, f- I'll say it's one of my favorites is the what's the one that shows um, like the early Tesla Elon sitting at a computer with a slider bar Elon on the screen. H4. Yeah. yeah, and it's a polygon count, and he just drops it. Oh, it's, I don't know if, uh, that's a computer nerd joke, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, well, I went to school for 3D design, so the polygons, the the more there is, the smoother the object. Obviously, this has none. Gotcha. <laughs> so okay. It's it's a more basic view of what what could be, but it, it's, it's funny to us, just... <laughs> Hey man, that's all right. I had my own nerd moment this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, we're at work, and this guy. Side note: this guy, you know, this one of the guys at work is talking about how we can't fill the dumpster as much as we have been filling it because it's been raining all day, and the material in the dumpster is saturating. So there's water now in the dumpster, and it's added a lot of weight. And so I pulled out my phone and I said, well, how many inches did it rain last night? And, you know, and somebody threw out and they're like, well, maybe six tops. And I'm like, that'd be a lot. I don't think it's, that'd be like flooding. uh, Well, in downtown Detroit, they did have flooding in a lot of areas. So, um, I did the math on it and I'm like, real quick, I'm like on my phone, you know, and I figured it out and I, you know, I couldn't do it in my head, but Mm -hmm. I did it all out and I'm like. Or I'm like, well, I said, let's figure for six inches of rain last night. It added 6,700 pounds of weight to the dumpster. And, like, three of the guys at work just turned and looked at me, and they're like, how, what? how did you figure that out? And I'm like, math. And 
I'm not even that good at math, but to, you know, once I knew, I punched in the oh, yeah. calculations, you know, and uh, the one guy goes, "You're in the wrong field, dude." <laughs> I'm like, no, this is the right field. I just needed to know how much extra weight we had in the dumpster. This yeah. is the reason I'm the foreman and you're the laborer. <laughs> I mean, you know, so. Yeah. But uh, anyways, um, off point there. Um, talking about the Tesla truck and talking about some of the mechanicals. Oh, I, I know where I was going with this. Hmm. The Facebook groups. The first Facebook group um, or Facebook groups, uh, plural, that I saw that embraced the Tesla truck were some of the overlanding groups. Um, it, you know, uh, listeners, if you don't know what overlanding is, go back to episode six. Uh, that was our overlanding episode. Uh, it kind of explains what overlanding is, but in a nutshell, it's it's camping and living out of your vehicle. Hmm. A lot of the overlanding groups said, hey, this is going to be great. Almost every single one of them said that we want to see a solar cell option for yeah. it. Um, so, you know, think about it, John, you know, you, so even if the thing only has a 250 mile range, you drive 150, 200 miles mm-hmm. from one destination to another. And even if it takes you two or three days at a campsite to charge it back up, you could infinitely live out of this vehicle oh, yeah. without ever burning any fossil and that's, fuels. That's just the base model. The, that tri-motor one, 500 plus mile range. Exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> in, in solar cells, I, I did read somewhere that uh, Tesla had said, or not Tesla, that um, Elon Musk had said that uh, they are exploring, or maybe they've already created a solar panel, uh, essentially tonneau cover for the for the bed of the truck. I could see it, and it looks like it in one of the pictures. Let me turn yeah. this back around, you can see it here. It, it just showed, so it'll be a well, that is something I do know a little bit about. Uh, many years ago, I did an apprenticeship program uh, for solar vehicles through mm-hmm. Western Michigan University. I don't nice. know if you ever knew that. I didn't know. Um, right, there we go. Yeah, I seen that same picture online myself. Yeah. The it, even figuring the little bit that I know about, mm-hmm. say nineteen nineties, early two thousand solar technology, solar panels that size could probably recharge that vehicle in four or five days. Oh yeah. Um, you, modern technology, I'm guessing, could probably two or three days. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, with overlanding, you take this thing and you go somewhere, sure, you're going to be, quote, unquote, stranded. But if oh, yeah. you've got your vehicle set up, here's what I would like to see. If it is going to be a tonneau cover panel of some sort, make mm-hmm. it lightweight enough that you can remove it from the truck when you don't need it, yeah. pulling things in the bed of the truck, but have it on some sort of a stand. Um, well, a stand or an yeah. umbilical lanyard type setup mm-hmm. where let's say, uh, if you have a sliding camper that it could be on top of your sliding camper. Oh yeah. That'd be cool too. Or if you're towing a fifth wheel with this thing yeah, that it could be sitting on top of the fifth wheel. Yeah. The other, I'll say another nice feature for those off-roading with it. It's got an adaptive air suspension, which means it's got an air compressor. And it's I port. saw that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now, did they mention if it's going to, you know, put out that 110, 120 PSI you need for air tools? That it did not, no. Because <laughs> I know, like, uh, the test, uh, um, the Lexus 470 and the, um, some, I'm trying to think, uh, the newer Jeep Grand Cherokees do have an air suspension, but mm-hmm. the uh, PSI is not high enough to run air tools. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah. So, but it would, I would hope that they would be, so I did read somewhere it's going to have an airport, though. I did read that. So I'm assuming that it is up in that 110, 120 PSI. Imagine something to that effect, at least, yeah. Yeah. So that's less stuff. You don't have to bring, you know, a scuba tank or power tank and adapters and all that, which is nice. You don't have to bring a scuba tank. So you're saying you well, just run an, air, run an air hose off it, and then yeah. that just, your umbilical, that you can just go do your diving right off the vehicle? No, no, no. I mean, for, you know, <laughs> filling tires. and. But now that I said it, you're thinking about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's what, huh. that's what that's what they use in third world countries. They just use regular like Harbor Freight air oh, compressors yeah. oh, as their dive hmm. compressors. Oh, there you go. I'll be back later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, so the Tesla truck, um, 16 inches of ground clearance, uh, up to a 500 mile range with the tri motor design. Although the tri motor design pushes the MSRP up in the 70 thousand range, right? Like just barely. Yeah, I, but the or... base price is like thirty nine. Yeah, let me see if I can. Which, which that's very reasonable. 
Hey, can I borrow a credit card? You no. Know. <laughs> See how far I can go with this order now screen. <laughs> well, the order now, you can. it's only $100 to, to get on the list on it. Ah, here we go. So yeah, the single motor, thirty nine nine. All the way up to the tri motor at sixty nine nine. Now, when is uh, te- now Tesla is famous for um, making promises and then breaking them, and, and especially on dates. Yep. When are when are they saying that it's going to come out right now? Uh, well, I'll just read this directly off the website. You have a hundred dollar due today, fully refundable. Be able to complete your configuration as production nears late twenty twenty one. Tri-motor, all-wheel drive expected to begin in late 2022. So it's going to be a few years till we start actually seeing these. Yeah, see, and that's where I'm concerned because... Um, what right, other changes are going to happen in the meantime would be my concern. Well, that yeah. and their number one competitor for the pickup market is Rivian, which is actually based right here in Detroit. I don't know anything about that. Rivian Trucks. Huh. Um, there's actually two companies based here in Detroit, Rivian Trucks and Bollinger Motors. And um, both of them are racing to bring a uh, pickup truck to the market. Now, hmm. I actually spoke with one of the higher up CEOs, something like that, of Bollinger, a couple of weeks ago about possibly coming on the podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, and he may do that in the future uh, with nice. some or somebody uh, with their PR department. But uh, their their trucks are going to be designed to be high market, uh, high end vehicles, uh, okay. seventy hundred thousand dollar range. Yeah, Riv- a out of my budget. Yeah, Rivian, <laughs> though, on the other hand, has partnered with Ford Motor Company, and Ford Motor Company has uh, dumped a ton, ton of money into Rivian, hmm. and uh, Rivian is helping them electrify the F-150, and they're also going to be coming out with their own pickup truck here by the end of next year, supposedly, mm-hmm. um, and I just... I. If Rivian jumps Tesla to the market on this thing and they come out with a reasonably priced pickup that looks good, yeah, performs good, you know, um, I don't know. I'm I'm concerned about that. I think if Tesla drags their feet too much, yeah. Rivian and Bollinger might really just you know mm-hmm. corner the market on this. Well, I'll, I'll say this: for a mere seven thousand dollar option on the Tesla, you can get a full self driving capability. You know, and I really do like that. I do because it's an interesting concept. The I, I think that's better in bigger cities or somewhere where there's a lot of high traffic. Out where we're at, I don't know if that'd be that great. I mean, the roads, you know, road closures and stuff change enough out here. Well, supposedly just, it's know. completely adaptive for that. And that's I don't understand enough of that technology to. I guess really understand it. <laughs> I think I'd have to opt for the self driving. I'd have to put my sliding camper in there so I can go in the back and I can make my coffee. I can make my sandwich and yeah. I can just let this thing drive down go the road. To sleep, wake up in destination. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that I am looking forward to that. I, I'd be more interested in the technology when it's more reliable and when it's more universally accepted. I it's in the sense out that there. when everybody's got it. Well, no. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, I work in the greater Detroit area all the time, mm-hmm. and mornings are not so bad. I actually listen to, uh, you know, like the Dave and Chuck the Freak show all the time yeah. going in. But a lot of times my drive home from work is, like, I have to make a lot of business phone calls, mm-hmm. um, both for Thin Line Off-Road, for my for the, the business that I work Hands for. Hands-free, of course, I imagine. Yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> I, I um, For my daughter, she gave me a set of these ear pod air pod mm-hmm. not air pod they have cables whatever they are they plug into my phone yeah but they're hands-free mm-hmm. and they work great and they sound great so i plug them in and i have to make a lot of these phone calls um on my way home a lot of times i'm driving an hour to two hours home and i'm i'm calling for thin line off road i'm calling yeah. for the demolition company that i work for um, things like that. And I tell you, it would be nice to have the option to sit down and do my paperwork in my vehicle Oh yeah. while I'm going down the road. Because yeah. I, I have every day at work, eh, depending on the day, between 15 minutes and an hour's worth of paperwork as well, too. Hmm. So if I could just do my paperwork on the ride home, that saves oh, yeah. me a bunch of time. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I like that idea. I do know, though, uh, you know, you know, at the beginning of this episode, before you and I started, I had mentioned that there was another topic that I wanted to maybe bring up in 4x4 Talk. Mm-hmm. Um, you missed out on our field trip. Oh, yeah, I know. 4x4 
Ford versus Ferrari. It's still on my list. You got to go see it, buddy. I, I will at some point. That you have my word on. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say that it's like one of my top 10 movies of all time. Mm-hmm. But from what my historical knowledge of the the show, Ford or the show, um, the, <laughs> the, the story, the story, <laughs> it's very accurate. Cool. The actors do a fantastic job with it. Um, I really got to give props to, um, man, now I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, I'll throw out Matt Damon. The other one. I don't remember. Who else? The one, the one who played Batman. I have no idea. Oh, man. Why am Adam I, why? West? No, not Adam. <laughs> the, 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 the Batman trilogy. Uh, he was also an American Horror Story. Or not American Horror Story, American a- anybody Psycho. Anybody over there in the audience happen to know what we're talking about? Uh, just They're Google it, John. Attention. Cast okay. cast of it. <laughs> why? Why? It's too late. We do these podcasts too late <laughs> at night sometimes, buddy. Yeah. That's uh, Christian Bale. Never mind. Okay. I just remembered it before you I did it. I was going to Chris- say, hey, you guys rescheduled. <laughs> Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Um, he plays Ken Miles. Okay. Who was a very... Uh, he was known as the bulldog. He was the, he was this he was a very um, uh, you know just well known race car driver at mm-hmm. the time, and he has an awesome and sometimes tragic story. But if you look at the old photos and videos of Ken Miles, and you look at the way that Christian Bale like handled himself in that mm-hmm. movie, like I'm watching the movie and I I'd seen photos and videos of Ken Miles before, yeah, and I'm like, but I hadn't really registered it. And I'm watching the movie, and Christian Bale's going around, and he's got his head, like, hunched down, like, you know, kind of stuck out forward. And they mm-hmm. called him the Bulldog, and that was his nickname. And he kind of looked like a bulldog, you know, his head mm-hmm. you know, st- sticking out like that. It had a so absolutely that looked like that. Okay, well, you go back and you look, and that's how Ken Miles carried himself. Huh. Like, that was just the thing. He had his, always had his head sticking forward, you know, nice. his shoulders kind of back. Yeah. And um, it just, I, I would not be surprised if... Um, he gets a uh, Academy Award for his portrayal of Ken Miles. Matt Damon did a very good job with Carol Shelby. Now, I personally actually briefly met Carol Shelby a number of years ago. Nice, um, you know, but I didn't talk to him long enough or anything to to get his infl- you know yeah. various inflections and things like his that. His character, yeah, yeah, his character. So I really, I'm really not a judge of that. Um, I hope that. Uh, the Shelby family, who's very, very involved, especially even in off-road motorsports to this day, um, is uh, you know happy with Matt Damon's portrayal of, of yeah. that. But um, I'll, I'll definitely get to watch it. That's for sure. At some point, definitely worth it. Yeah. Um, I did it have to be a big screen movie? No, I I was thinking maybe it was one of those movies you had to see in the big screen. Mm-hmm. It was not an epic film that you'd needed. You, know, yeah. you could watch it on your TV or whatever, but. I couldn't even tell you the last movie I saw in a theater. It's I think I commented we did go once see, on a prior episode about that. We did go see it in a the theater, you know. Nice. Uh, yeah. Producer Andrew, myself, and my son, and we all enjoyed it. Very it, cool. It was very, very cool. cool so. Good to know. <laughs> um, back to the Tesla, though. Mm. Uh, so, you know, just talking about innovations and, and, you know, the innovations of Shelby and things like that. Mm-hmm. But Well, I'll, I'll say this one thing. I, I kept forgetting to scroll down to read these off. The approach and departure angles on this. Okay, how much? What, what are the angles? Thirty-five degree approach. That's very respectable. Twenty-six degree departure. Very respectable. Yeah, it's from what I understand one of the the best ones out there, at least right now. Is that better than a Jeep Wrangler? I have no idea. I mean, let me see what the Google machine says. I I I would bet that the departure angle is better than a Jeep Wrangler. Possible. The approach is probably similar. I think the the Jeep's in that mid thirties as well. Um, oh wow, the JL's got. Uh, well, the the like the pickup's going to be terrible, but the yeah. Well, if we're comparing Wrangler to them, yeah. No, I'm talking like the actual Wrangler. Well, I mean, pickup, well, this would be for the JL Wrangler. Uh, well, uh, you know, to be fair Wrangler. though, we need to compare the Gladiator to it because it is a pickup. True. True. So let me. So that's. I mean, but even even a Wrangler, out of curiosity. Well, now that I changed it, it said it. Uh, all right, so the Gladiator has an approach of forty-three point six, and a departure of twenty-six. So similar. Yeah, eight degree, eight point six degree difference. 
That's, that's yeah. impressive. No, yeah, that's pretty impressive. The, the Wrangler just shows a 44-degree approach angle. This does not tell me the departure, though, on this quick preview. Okay. Um, our, most of our listeners, if you're big 4x4 enthusiasts, you'd probably know what approach and departure angle are. We've mentioned them in previous shows as well. But uh, if you don't know, real quickly, the approach and departure angle of a vehicle are if you took your vehicle and you drove it up against, let's say, a brick wall, and then you took and you drew an invisible line from the point that your vehicle is touching that brick wall to the very front edge of your tire, or if you're doing it from the back to the back edge of your tire, that angle right there is your approach angle or your departure angle. Why does this matter? The better that your angle is, so that the more degrees that you have, means that your vehicle has a better chance of climbing up or climbing over and descending something without getting hung up. So the better your approach angle, as close to 90 degrees as possible, is going to be better. Same thing for your departure angle. Now, most vehicles, your approach angle is slightly better than your departure angle. Um, I don't think there's actually a lot of vehicles where it's the other way around. But... um, you know, these things matter in an off-road vehicle. So if you have just a terrible, I mean, if you've got the approach angle of an 85 Lincoln Continental, (laughs) you're not going to go very far. Yeah. (laughs) You're not going to go very far off road rocks. Maybe, you know, if you've got, if you've got four feet of sheet metal from your front tire to your front bumper, that's a bad (laughs) thing. So yeah, Uh, that's one of the reasons too, where, um, veteran off-roaders, You'll see, you know, we'll be driving around and we'll see somebody that we realize is probably fairly new to the hobby or the sport or whatever you want to call it. And they're building stuff in their own backyard, which is admirable. But they say maybe build a custom bumper and the custom bumper for their vehicle sticks a foot and a half out of the front (laughs) of their vehicle. Yeah. They have now destroyed their approach angle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it matters the most in rock crawling. And in off-road situations where you'd say maybe be going through a ditch or a gully, something like that. But, um, you know, it doesn't matter as much as in sand or in mud. Yeah. So I got it here. This is uh, a different source. They're saying the the Sahara edition has 41.8 degree approach and a departure. Oh, I lost it. Uh, a departure of between 27.8 to 22.6 on the Rubicon. Okay. Well, so, and that that's the unlimited, the four door. Yeah. So it's it's I'm having it's actually not quickly evident the other specs for it. I don't know why it's more than a simple Google search, but whatever. Pretty easy to look at a vehicle and tell yeah. if the approach and departure angle is decent. Very respectable for a truck, all things considered. Yeah, I mean, like you look at my Brat Pack FJ60 build, mm-hmm. uh, approach angle is awesome. My departure angle is the <laughs> same as the station wagon, um, and I got to do something about that. Bob it. I'm gonna eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like pie cut the back of it. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, John, we're probably getting to that break time. Um, let's do a quick break, and when we come back, let's kind of wrap up this thing with the Tesla truck. And uh, sounds good. See you in a bit. Hey, it sounds like it's time to swap out that old engine for something better, John. Yeah, man, but I have so much into my trans and transfer case set up already. I don't want to change those, two. Sounds like you need to call Quick Draw Brand Adapters. They specialize in conversion bell housings for nearly all diesel and gasoline engines, including the new 2.8R Cummins. You know, I like weird engines, though. I want something different. Then you definitely need to visit quickdrawbrand.com today. They have those hard-to-find parts... They also have used diesel engines available. You can call them at 513-446-9654. Cool, I'll do that. See what they have. Thanks. During the break, uh, John and I continued to talk about the Tesla truck a little bit and uh, some of the features. Uh, what else did you want to bring up about it, John? Uh, not much. I just I really like the thing. I think it's very impressive. And I, I didn't realize the, the build times were so far off, so... I'm anxious to see what other changes are going to be implemented from now until the actual release on them. And then I wonder how far back ordered they're going to be by then, too. True, so, true, yeah. Um, I'd love to get one of these things, though. 
As as it sits right now, I would love to get one. This thing is seriously cool. You know, I, I agree with you. I, I'm there, too. I I could deal with the 250-mile range for the most part. Again, that's just the base model. That you is know, just all the, the, the base model changes the, the towing capacity and all that good stuff. But even on the, the single motor, it's still 7,500 pounds towing capacity on that. You know, we know we know about the approach and departure angle. We know about the horsepower and torque specs, the towing specs. But what we really don't know is, does this have or does it even need any sort of low range like a transfer case? That I don't know. Well, you know, there are people that have, have hmm. questioned whether or not the thing's four-wheel drive. Yeah. I think that that was already addressed, and they said that it has a drive motor at each wheel or something. Wow. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> I, I saw that somewhere, yeah. so uh, you know I'm pretty confident that it's four wheel or all wheel drive mm-hmm. of some sort. Well, the the dual motor and the tri motor, at least they're listed as all wheel drive. So the the single motor is listed as rear wheel only. Oh, so that that changes it a little bit. How what's the base price of the dual motor then? Uh, you know that's the only one I didn't check. Let me pull that up. Hmm. Or did I say that? Well, what's the difference between the dual motor and the tri motor? See, I want to one I wanna, motor. Well, I want to figure this out. Like, I mean, is it <laughs> the, just the, the towing dual, spec? Dual's forty nine nine. Okay. And then the tri is sixty nine nine, whereas the base is thirty. What What does the extra motor get me though? Does it get me more towing capacity? Yes. Does it get me better off roading cap- capabilities? I would imagine uh, more range. So, looking just explicitly on that. Again, you're, you're single. You're looking at 250 mile range, 7,500 pound capacity. With the dual, 300 miles, 10,000 pound, and then try as 500 miles, 14,000 pound. Okay, um, answer me this since you got their website pulled up right now, because this is something I don't know. The Model X SUV that they already make is that an off? Is that a four wheel drive vehicle? I have no idea. I'm on the Cybertruck. <laughs> Yeah, model well, X. Yeah, the Model X. It's I it's it I base price is like eighty thousand dollars or something. It's, I think it's, that's one a friend of mine just got. It's got the gullwing doors in the back. That's cool. Uh, is that well? I mean, is that what they got? It's a four door, and then the back door is open. That's cool. I don't know. I'm just looking at the first picture. Model really like... X has been out for a couple of years now. Um, I've only seen one in person on the road, but I'm not gonna lie. That thing looks pretty sweet. No, they they do. Um, but. You know, my question is: Where Are the specs for this? basically reason I'm asking here, John? Does does Tesla have experience building a four wheel drive vehicle already? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to find specs, but again, you just can't find them. It's not loading. I, it's probably the what I'm trying to look it up with. What a potato? No Chromebook. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's not the fastest. Okay. Well, I'll keep looking. We can yeah, go. no, okay. So that, that, you know, I don't know, man. Um, we've talked a lot about this Tesla truck. I'm, I'm excited for this thing. Mm. Uh, I was kind of hoping that you and I would argue about it or we'd get, like, we had a couple <laughs> plans for other people to possibly come on and argue about this thing. We're not going to create fake drama, though. No. Uh, we're going to talk our honest opinions on oh, it. Yeah. This is my honest opinion on it is that I like it. You know, the rest of my family doesn't. They all think it's hideous. I've shown it to the kids. I've shown it to the fiance. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, they don't think it looks good at all. Hmm. Uh, you know, personally, I like it. I like the specs of it. The only – I'll say this. I'm, the only thing I – Still, I don't want to say debate is the whole autopilot thing. But again, I don't understand enough of it to trust it yet. See, now I like that. I understand that. Um, uh, it is listed as all-wheel drive. Dual oh. motor, all-wheel drive, instantly controls traction and torque in all weather conditions. Okay. All right. Well, that's <laughs> a, that's what I want to find well, out. If like the tri-motor is better off-road or something. I want more information about that. Yeah. Uh, back to the design of the tesla truck i did notice on one of the videos there was an automotive reporter that did a a short video of a ride along in one Mm -hmm. and he mentioned that from the seat you know sitting in the front of the vehicle he could not reach the point where the wind you know with his hand he could not reach the point where the windshield met the top of the dashboard Hmm. now that seems like a minor thing 
But as a vehicle gets dusty and dirty and you want to clean yeah. it, if you can't reach up there and there's stuff getting trapped up there mm-hmm. and it's getting nasty, um, might want to rethink that area a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that, w- that would make some sense. I could see that being problematic. You know, you need to re- just and you could refigure the dash design or yeah. something. Something where you can actually reach up there. Yeah, I mean, mind you, I'd, I'd drive a Wrangler and can't extend my arm you know, to the glass. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> uh, you, you drive a Wrangler. If a bird dry, flies by and poops, the windshield cracks. I mean, that's... Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, What's that, stone chip? What kind of rock was it? Sparrow? Well, they actually <laughs> just talked about Dave and Chuck the Freak show the other day hmm. where they were talking about, like, I think Chuck the Freak drives a Wrangler, a lifted Wrangler, and oh. um, he was mentioning that, you know, he cracks windshields all the time. Yeah, I never... I, mine had a crack when I first bought it. And I'm admitting this out loud to everybody listening, but I never got it fixed. There's so many cracks and chips in it. Big old piece of plexiglass. Eh, I'm not even worried about that. Now, here I am. I'm all proud on Project Excursion, (laughs) which has been hit. Mm -hmm. It has been rear-ended. It's been sideswiped. It's been off-road. And I have the original windshield with the original sticker in the the bottom of it that says it was built at the Kentucky truck plant. Nice. And... There's no cracks, or there might be one little chip in it somewhere, but. Right. So, you mean the, the one on thing anybody says if you ever buy a used vehicle, or if you have, you know, you got a vehicle, you've had it a while, is you don't necessarily want to know what the Carfax says. Yeah. I, I, I've heard that, anyways. Well, where I worked before, a friend of mine ran the VIN for me. Apparently, at one point in time, my Wrangler, and it's written as hit dock and or pier. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that. Well, you're Don't a water you're a water guy. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Hit dock and or it's pier. It's dock slash pier. Right, and I'll have to find the report. And show you, it's pretty funny. And you, you mentioned originality and parts. So this back up to the XJ a little bit. I I had a spare set of lift gate shocks mm-hmm. that I found in my cleaning. I went to swap them on. Unfortunately, they're they're bad. I didn't know that, or I wouldn't have kept them. But the I, I took the ones off that were on it. I am fairly certain they were the original liftgate shocks on that thing. That wouldn't surprise me. And I, I held it up, and you can watch the thing just fall to the bottom. <laughs> There's no dampening force whatsoever in them. It's pretty yeah. funny. But. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, people find... Um, I'm big into the history of the the old Tucker automobiles. And um, years ago, I was doing, when I was in junior high or high school uh, uh, research report on them. And I ended up talking to a couple of restorers of those vehicles. Mm-hmm. And the one guy was telling me stories about how, like, when he restored one of them, it was all original and it had never been restored. And there was, like, parts that were held together with masking tape on the inside <laughs> that had... Nice. And they had actually, like, written on, on the uh, parts something along the lines of to be replaced, uh, and then they had, like, initials of oh, various wow. people because they were all working prototypes. Cool. But, you know, so. You know, th- th- this might be something to ask our listeners here. I know a guy who works at a, like, I guess you'd call it, like, an exotic vehicle restoration. He, he does, a, like, a lot of the Duesenbergs and stuff. I, I know who you're speaking of, yes. We'll talk later. I'll just see maybe if uh, anyone would be interested we could talk to him at some point, do a little interview about uh, you know some of these old vehicles and like their process, how they go through some of it or something, maybe. You know, yeah, what what it takes to. I know he does a lot of the convertible tops, yeah. and things like that, yeah. Um, and interior work. What does it take to preserve, to figure out, to? Um, and, and you know that that is actually something that I would like to speak with him about yeah. because. Certain models of off-road vehicle and 4x4 vehicles that people are restoring these days do not have a strong aftermarket following. No. For, for example, like the first-generation Jeepster mm-hmm. or, um, you know, what else would be out there? Um, you know, the, the Scouts and the Blazers and the Broncos all have a pretty good following, but yeah. if you're restoring something a little more oddball, even something as simple as maybe a first-generation Dodge Ram Charger, mm-hmm. um, some of the parts are just not available. Yeah. Uh, what does it take, you know, besides finding new old stock parts? You know, how do you remanufacture parts? How do you, you know, what do, yeah. you, what do you do? So, yeah, we should bring them on. Well, yeah, I'll reach out to him, see if he'd be interested in doing that. Absolutely. Sounds good. Uh, John, you got anything else, buddy? No, that's about it. All I can think of. All right, you ready to go put that order in for that Tesla truck? 
Yeah, yeah, I just got to borrow your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing, buddy. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for listening, and have a good one, everybody.